Previously on Disc Junkie TV. Today I am going to take on a massive project. This is supposed to become the new movie room. And I thought we would actually do like a time lapse sequence. I will come back for a second video where I will show it more at its sort of like final stage. Not really sure what to do with this corner. And then we have the second room here, which you can see I decided to go with lower shelves. Maybe like a small table or something in this corner. Old style TV or something. Maybe I will do like these movie chairs like these old red ones that you fall down I just get a projector and I get some chairs and then maybe I could put in some sort of you know pull down for projecting movies like get a white one or something there's a lot of work still to be done I guess we can just summarize it that way really hope you enjoyed this and as usual hope to see you all next time Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie. I made a video about a year ago actually, where I basically moved my ginormous film collection from the room downstairs to the rooms, actually two of them, upstairs. And I thought I would give you a bit of an update as to what has happened. Now that one year has passed, then I feel that the movie room is really coming together in a, in a good way. This is the sort of first, the smaller uh, part of my collection. It's actually a very very small room as you can see should probably flip the screen because it will be easier for me to know what the hell i'm filming now it sort of looks like i'm taking the camera from some imaginary camera person you give it here yeah you just give it you saw this in the old video when i was setting up the shelves and whatnot i bought a new cabinet from ikea it's not an extremely new model but it's fairly new i think it came out in the last few years or so this particular color is actually new this white one cabinet is called fabricor and it's made from metal and glass. You know, I have some ideas as to what to put in here, but it's not essentially completed yet. I did put some Dexter stuff here on the top shelf, but I really do like the model. It is a very sort of interesting industrial look to it, but still very sort of polished and modern looking. So it's, it's a very nice cabinet. I also added a new white curtain for the backdrop. Basically a curtain which runs from the ceiling to the floor. There's actually a door behind here. We have a like a really big balcony out here which we don't use. Then we have the rest of the room here which uh, as you probably know by now this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection or at least the three shelves in the middle. These are all copies of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with some minor exceptions but this is a film which I uh, collect with a very Great deal of passion. Then I have a bit of a retro corner over here. Uh, there's some quite mixed stuff up here at the top. Little uh, King Kong doll up there. And uh, yeah, here are some retro editions. Modern day movies which are sort of meant to look old, so to speak. And don't call me out on like saying like, you know, that one's wrong. Because yeah, there might be. I'm just trying to throw stuff in which is essentially in the same sort of style. Uh, I guess. Here's basically the same thing. Bunch of these sort of retro style tapes for for newer movies. Then I got my Nintendo collection. Just some NES games here, which I have. My old 8-bit system. Yeah, and then there's some more retro stuff here in the back. With got my heart boxes there. I don't have too many of those actually. Some uh, video store rental boxes. Here's a rentable DVD box and the rentable uh, VCR and the rentable karaoke machine which comes in a very sort of similar uh, case. I guess I'm gonna go through the Texas Chainsaw stuff in detail when I make my sort of annual or biannual video about Texas Chainsaw. Then we got a bit of a horror section over here. I really suck at doing like you know like alphabetizing or, or doing very sort of uh, detailed or, or specific uh, sorting. I'm, I'm not very good at that at all. Uh, so I just tend to sort of 
put things together that are sort of like the same genre or the same feel. And that way, like, if I'm looking for a movie, I'm thinking like, okay, so I'm looking for... I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for Texas Chainsaw, so I just go to the Texas Chainsaw. Now, I mean, like, if I'm looking for a movie with monsters, I sort of know that, oh, monster movies, I have that sort of like in this general area, and then I'll go there and I'll find it. Even if everything's mixed together, you can sort of like, yeah, yeah, that movie, that's gotta be somewhere over here. Just a testament as to how insane we really are. Now on the other side of the room, as you can see over here, I have a, a new shelf. It looks like a regular Ikea shelf, but it is in fact an Ikea clone, uh, which I bought at a company called Jysk. It's pretty common. Swedish store or Scandinavian store, I guess. The only reason why I bought this version as opposed to buying the Ikea version, because it had different measurements. It was a bit slimmer, which meant that it would be like a perfect size to go from the wall all the way over here. There is actually a space behind here, which you can also see if I just look here. Actually quite a bit of space behind this shelf. And this was also the idea that I really wanted to hide this space because basically in the back here you can see that there's like a small cabinet thingamajig there. That's actually a circuit box. So I need to be able to access that. Which is why, you know, I can't put a shelf here unless I actually placed these really heavy duty wheels on it. Now these wheels and this shelf, I don't know if I'm gonna attempt to actually move this with one hand. It is actually extremely sturdy, but I mean if you use, use both hands, it is quite movable. And it did give me a lot of storage space, which I didn't have before. It's just a mixed bag. I'm such a all over the place kind of collector. Here's an old cassette player, which I bought at a flea market. And I got some books here, various things. Got my laser discs over here, uh, most of them, as well as some bigger box sets, like old VHS box sets, which are just too big to fit in like regular bookshelves, more books, 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 uh, jeep, lantern thing there, my Mr. Fusion, <laughs> Coffina Super coffee grinder from Germany, which is the original product used to create the Mr. Fusion, so I bought one of those and sort of made a replica using stickers that you can buy on eBay, bag and some other stuff, here are my Nintendo clamshells, Swedish rental clams, which I love, I think I've shown these in a different video, Various mixed boxes, which I don't really have space for anywhere else. You can just throw them in here. I've got some videotapes from a label called... Is it Arena? Yeah, it's Arena. Arena. I do like to sort stuff by label. And there we got a bit of an unrated cover, so I'm just flipping that over. Here are more stuff from the same label. And then there's another label called VCM. These are Swedish tapes, Swedish labels, and uh, so yeah, I just placed all of my tapes in the same place because it looks really nice to have them set up like that. Oh yeah, I can mention this, this is an innovation which I've worked on but I haven't really perfected or completed it yet. Sorry about all the flies in the, in the roof light. Come on, wake up you guys! Fucking lazy flies. That's the thing about Sweden, all the flies are really lazy. So here is another curtain, like the one over there. I bought both, both of these from Ikea. And the reason why I placed the curtain here... Oh, just get stuck somehow. There we go. Why did I do this? Well, I sort of have this idea that I want to get like a fold-out table or some kind of table which I can basically take out when I need it and just flip up here and then I can basically just have this laying on the table which will create this. A perfect backdrop for which you can photograph videotapes, DVDs, whatever. I can also film my reviews. Plus, I used this really long pull-down curtain. Is that a, that word? I think so. You know, I like fashion and I like photography and I've gotten really into clothes, buying hoodies and, and, and unusual stuff. I mean, if you want to take selfies or you want to take pictures of yourself doing like hairstyles and working on my beard or shaving or whatever it is, I figured this would be a nice backdrop so you can actually take top to bottom pictures with a nice plain backdrop. Little trick which you can take with you if you like that kind of stuff. Doing that whole sort of cool filming then you're thinking like, oh, it's it's so confusing and now something exciting is happening. Like he doesn't know where to go. Well, I'm going right in there. Don't you, don't you worry. And now there's like, there's like, yeah, there's stuff going on in there. I'm 
taking the camera again. Let's just go ahead and move into the main movie room, or the main man cave imagery. And I know it's quite dark, but I'm gonna lighten things up, so I just wanna give you a bit of an overview as to what it looks like in here. So, as you can see, I got a new television, which I might as well start to talk about. This is a Philips TV, which I got at Media Markt. And it is, uh, I'm just so super happy about this. As you can see, it's got like the ambilight, the behind the screen uh, light up thing, which I think is really nice. So it sort of shows different color variations based on what kind of movie you're projecting and different parts of the screen and whatnot. So that's really nice, really enhances the experience. I picked this out primarily because it was a perfect size. That's sort of what I went with to begin with. It's a 55 inch and I'm not just saying like 55 inch like the perfect size. The thing is that if you were to inspect this, looking at like the, the spaces on the side here, I got exactly six centimeters. I got the same on that side and I even have six centimeters from uh, the, the base of the shelf here to the to the underside of the TV, which was just a really lucky coincidence. And I just love the look of this. It's got this minimalistic sort of dark black chrome thing going on. It is shiny, but it's not like your regular chrome. It's sort of like a dark chrome, which works really well in this room because I got like a dark tone going. So I'm just gonna open up. There is actually a window behind here. I'm never gonna have these curtains pulled back, but I'm gonna do this right now because now you can sort of see my my backyard because now it will be a little lighter in here so you can actually see stuff got a lovely light there which i bought on uh, like the swedish equivalent of a uh, craigslist i guess 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 <laughs> i know i'm all over the place but there's so much fun stuff that i want to show you now it's been ages so yeah this is a really awesome lamp which I got second hand and it's like strings on the outside which I think are it gives a really nice I don't know I just I just love this light it's just a single bulb in it I think it was sold at like this sort of high-end uh, furniture shop back in the day I even got the like the original uh, price tag from the the girl who sold that she actually kept it so I could see what it what it costs and it was originally priced at uh, like 2,000 Swedish crowns and I got it for 500 and it's actually in great great shape so I was really happy about this and it, it melts so well with like you know the awesome wallpaper and just like the, the whole reddish feel that I want to go for and it's just it's just a really cozy light I love it it works so well with like when you're just sitting in here and you just want to watch a movie and you don't want to you don't you know you want to have dim lighting and not just the light from the tv it just gives this this slight slightest reddish glow throughout the room and it's just i love it the rest of the room what i wanted to talk about are the shelves the white parts here that's all billy bookshelves from ikea purchased these extra boards I spray painted them with a matte black finish so as you can see i've actually placed uh boards uh, all around uh, the exterior you can see here it goes from the floor just on the exterior got the original billy shelf here and then i got this blackboard which is the same size and width and whatnot which runs all the way to the back wall and then i basically i just draped these uh, placed them all around cut a bunch of pieces and spray painted them and i mean if you look closely you can sort of see like some edges which I had to get there's like an edge over here which I mean if you walk up close you can obviously see it but overall it's like I don't care it looks looks great it really blends away just as soon as you take a few steps back and I'm sorry about the dust I just I just suck at dusting so I got this black running all the way down here I get them running underneath the television and then they go up and go around the room on the other side in exactly the same way. So the room is actually really symmetrical in terms of those. I got the same shelves on both sides and they're all equally spaced and equally proportioned. Like I got a 40 centimeter, then I got 80 centimeter, then 80, 80, 40. Then I got three shelves at the bottom there, which are actually custom shelves. I think the first one is a regular 40 centimeter one. I just use repurposed Billy 
shelf which I had and built this custom section in the middle to just get the exact width that I needed because it's very odd width. I can just remove this if I want to and you can just see the floor so it's, it's hardly even a real shelf but it works so I guess this is a simple tip for any of you IKEA hackers out there. It's something you can do which is actually quite simple you know you can use parts like I did you can see here you got three original uh, holes for like the shelving basically just need to drill a few extra holes and then you can easily make stuff that look really close to the original shelves that IKEA sell and also as you can see here I don't have any backdrops for any of my shelves so you can essentially see the wallpaper I mean if I pull out tapes over here you, you can't hardly see it but yeah it is true you can back to see the wallpaper through any any shelf because there's no backdrop on any of these and it's not something that I would essentially recommend because it does uh, lessen the stability of the Billy bookshelf. But if, like me, you have shelves all around the room like this, then you can... Yeah, I got bolts and I got the, the cover boards on the upside and downside and whatnot. Now I'm actually gonna pause for a bit. I'm gonna have to go downstairs and do some... make some dinner now. I'm gonna be making some carbonara, which is, feels weird saying it in, in English when I don't normally speak English. Yeah, the, the lighting outside might definitely have changed by then, so just in case there's some angry people who are... I don't know. I could have just lied about this. Could have just closed the curtain and said that it's still day outside, but it won't be. It will be nighttime. All that stuff about carbonara was true, but I'm back. And I didn't try to do the whole sort of trick with the thing, you know, whatever. I think I'm gonna activate a light. Let me just do this. Just give me a second to activate the light on the camera. There we go. This might be a little bit better. I have a shelf which I put in quite recently, which was also a secondhand find off of Blocket, aka Sweden's Craigslist. This is a uh, Lee Longen high cabinet. It usually has like a mirrored door on it which I removed and it is essentially a cabinet which is usually used in like the bathroom for it's like a bathroom kind of style cabinet. It usually comes with legs on it but I decided not to so uh, yeah I just put this up here it is the blackish brown version and I decided to use it for my uh, label it's a Swedish bootleg label which is called Video Dynamic Bahrain that's right it is called Video Dynamic Bahrain, even though it's a Swedish bootleg label, it's got nothing to do with Bahrain. They essentially stole or made up the, the label name uh, in hopes that nobody would realize that they didn't have the rights to release all these movies. So it's very sort of cult classic 80s movies, which are, are released in, in Sweden under a a fake, fake labeling. Then over here I have my vintage erotica cabinet which is, this is something which have been slightly discussed in my Instagram video so I'm actually gonna just grab a key for that cabinet just so I can show you a little bit of it. And this is also an IKEA cabinet and this is a, a cabinet from the same series. This is also a, a Fabriqueur cabinet same as the one over there, but this is obviously a smaller version or a, you know, differently proportioned, more of a square shaped. This one usually comes with legs on it, so it looks quite differently uh, compared to that one. It is slightly higher and all that, but I removed the legs, put some wooden boards under here, which I just painted black, but you can hardly see them. They really blend together, but here they are. So, got another one there, and I did this because this allows me to compensate for the ridiculously slanted floor. As you can see, you got a really slim slim one over here and much higher over there, but I uh, compensated so that I get a really leveled uh, and straight looking cabinet in terms of like the, the space on the sides and all that. So uh, yeah, looking at it from afar, it looks like it's very proportionate and straight even though the floor is really, really slanted. Also, this cabinet is actually beige, whereas the one outside is white. This one isn't released in white, nor was the other one. The other one didn't exist in beige. It's a really weird series in terms of coloring. In any case, my little vintage erotica section, which tends to be growing because I'm really interested in it. And I'm now using the glare <laughs> uh, of the lighting there to 
purposely censor some nudity. Um, but uh, there's really not too much nudity in terms of the, the covers. I do have some other movies here. I mean, there's a lot of tapes here, a lot of classic sort of 70s and 80s pornography and erotic films like Devil Insider, really bizarre occult classic film from the 70s. And there's also like some DVD collections, adult cartoons, and uh, some of them aren't like, you know, straight out uh, porn films. Some are just like this one, this is Breaking Point, a Swedish film which doesn't really exist in an official release. This is actually a bootleg, but it is a very sort of, it's a film which features a lot of really graphic situations with like uh, penetration and blowjobs and stuff like that, which is quite extreme for a regular film. Uh, it's very uncommon. This is Thriller, Cruel Picture, cult classic. Christina Lindner film, which most people know. It's called, uh, they call her One Eye in America. And yeah, as well as some other, most of these are straight out porn films. I got some eight millimeter movies and I can't show too much because it's usually quite graphic in terms of cover art. But obviously here's one which isn't too graphic. This is more of like a glamour film, which isn't as extreme in terms of explicit sex or such. That's also a Super 8 reel. I'm really into Super 8 as a format right now. This is actually a, a four part. So I actually got additional reels. It's actually a feature length presentation, which is really uncommon. Then I got a bunch of uh, 8mm films down here, which I also can't, can't show you cover of. But I got a lot of stuff. Here's one which I can show the cover of, but it's called, from a series called Smash. But yeah, this is pornography. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much about uh, my interest in vintage erotica. People want to know more, they can ask me, but I'm guessing this will be discussed in in other videos, which I intend to do, uh, but they will probably not be released on YouTube. I will probably release them elsewhere to talk about this part of my collection in a bit more detail, but uh, at least now you can see some of it. Here's some animated, I don't know if you can show this, but yeah, here's some animated uh, erotic Flicks from I don't know when. Awesome Monster Girls uh, magazine by Caleb Oglesby, which I purchased on Instagram. Really gotta look that guy up. He does really awesome stuff. You can dwell on this for eternity, so I'm just gonna close this and just look at some of the other stuff in here. Also, on the top here, I just gotta mention this is a microfish viewer which I purchased at a second hand shop for like close to nothing. And then I was able to pick up a collection of microfish uh, cards of uh, the American magazine Sports Illustrated, which is insane. I actually have this over here uh, in my little shelf. So I'm going to talk about this in another video if you want to see detail just to that. But just as an example, I'm just going to power this up like so. So there we go, and this is, I, I, I purposely keep it on this particular shot. As you can see, this is a microfish viewer, got a microfish card down here, so all of these little squares, those are actually A4 size pages. I don't know if you can read this, but this says Sports Illustrated, Volume 44, blah blah blah. So this is from January 19th, 1976. And so then you just move this thingamajig and you can view the various pages in the magazine. So you can actually read them if you want to. So, I mean, there's all kinds of old ads and stuff. You usually see these in like old movies where they look for like, you know, like crime, <laughs> trying to figure out, looking at old uh, newspaper articles and stuff like that, looking for uh, to solve crimes usually, and yeah. But there's a lot of old ads and cool stuff in here, so I mean, I, I, I decided to pick this particular uh, issue of the magazine because it is one of their infamous uh, swimsuit issues, and I'm really into uh, vintage erotica and stuff of that nature, so that's why what I had with this particular microfish card. But yeah, like I said, I got a whole bunch of them. In a, in a folder over there, but yeah. 
Let's look at the rest of the collection for a bit. Start by looking at the setup I got here on the top shelf. As you can see, it is really, really mixed. I just display all kinds of stuff that I like. And it is, I mean, it's, it's DVDs, it's, it's stuff that isn't even movie related, just stuff that I like. It's a funny, what do you call it, bottle opener. Which I also found at the flea market. I just like the look of it, it's a funny thing. I like toys, I like figures and stuff like that. There's a weirdo doll head, which is ceramic. Here's Satisfaction Man. For anyone who, who doesn't know about Satisfaction Man, he's just a guy who is really into Satisfaction. If you want to know more about Satisfaction Man, you can just uh, look him up on Instagram. Where he posts stuff about his life. That's right. All kinds of DVDs, box sets, and just, you know... There's, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I like toys. Uh, especially movie related toys and old transformers from my childhood Some laser disc box sets DVD box sets. Oh, sorry for the zoom. Let's just zoom out. Here we go Woo! 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 Don't you just love video Effects and people who know how to use them. This is my Terminator Endoskull DVD player You know, I got to do that <laughs> Every every time I make a video to make people go oh. So that's it for that side of the room Or that side of the room top shelf got a bit of an alien section a bunch of alien stuff Got a bus light your hair just because I didn't know where to put him uh, some more alien stuff Alien boxes alien boxes some minor report More minor report all of my minor report tin cases Which I've been quite famous for owning and talking about. The ever awesome Manor Report Aluminum Attaché, which is a story of its own. Just just various stuff. I mean I can just doesn't make a lot of sense of just pointing it out, telling you what it is, but I'll try to mention some stuff if if needed. But I mean I guess you can just ask questions and I'll Try to answer them. That's it for the top section, and then we get to the corner, which is essentially my little man cave seat here. Got a comfy chair, which I also bought second hand. Oh yeah, I put up a shelf in the corner here, which is my little found footage shelf, which I guess I might have to use for something else soon, because it's a genre I really like, so I tend to buy stuff from this genre, or at least I started recently, so it's one of the few genres which I still try to pick up stuff from that's new, so to speak. I guess we can just go ahead and check some of the lower parts of the shelves here. All of my uh, Coen Brothers stuff, like Lebowski and Fargo and other movies. Here are some Terry Gilliam DVDs as well. I tried to, you know, there's some stuff I want to, you know, put the same kind of stuff, like from a certain director I'll put it in the same place, or here I'll have the same label. But I don't have too much of the same label, so it's just like three or four tapes and then new label, but yeah. You can see that I do try to organize, but it's a lot of the time it is just very sort of disorganized in that I'll, I'll organize stuff differently based on different genres, based on different labels, or you know, I'll just constantly change it based on mood, which is makes it really weird, but... Yeah, usually you can sort of see where I'm going, like, here's all of my Christopher Nolan stuff. Then I get to my David Fincher stuff, all the David Fincher films. Then I got a label again, all of my Walters video uh, videotapes, uh, as well as some other labels from other companies. And we got some more DVDs, DVDs by genre now, sort of like sci-fi, adventure uh, kind of stuff. Post-apocalyptic films and sort of alternate future thingies. Then at the bottom here we got my weird tapes. I love weird tapes. Here's like stuff that I find at flea markets that nobody else would want. Like really weird stuff. Like this is... <sighs> Here's something re relating to Ikea. I haven't even watched this, but I think it's a presentational video for their old uh, Factum series. Like a, <laughs> a kitchen series which you have. Uh, like that kind of stuff. I love tapes which don't make sense that you know it's not really meant for 
for common, um, like for the common market. You got all kind of weird stuff here. A lot of them are, are Swedish tapes. So some weird tapes down there. And some more weird tapes here in the corner. As well as a lot of these video wire kits. Which are just video wires. Here in the corner is my little setup with the power for the for the television. Which I'm gonna turn back on. You didn't notice but I turned it off before. So then I can just hide it there and I'll just have tape in front. So I really like the TV because I, I basically only need the power for it. That's all I need. It sort of has a built-in Wi-Fi thingamajig. It can basically stream Netflix and all that using the Wi-Fi, which is great. And then it has like built-in apps for YouTube and Netflix. Uh, some more uh, kind of like genre stuff, like action, adventure, like Gladiator, Gangs of New York, Da Vinci Code, those kind of movies. Then we got my Warner tapes, a bunch of old videotapes from the same label, which is obviously Warner. Then we get to more of my Alien stuff. I mean, as you can see, I sort of try to place them in the same way or the same place. So I got my alien stuff up there on the top shelf and then I also got alien right beneath it. So generally like if I want something I'll just go to where that part is and usually I'll have my stuff close by or adjacent to that. It, it's a weird way to, to sort but I don't know, I'm, I'm a very weird guy. Here's my little Kubrick section. As well as more Minority Report editions. Here are some... A bunch of Korean releases from various labels. I don't know why I sorted them like this, I just did. Got some more Warner tapes, as well as some bootleg ones, which I made myself. And then we got some Japanese tapes. Uh, as well as some other stuff that's written in, in uh, Taiwanese or other languages, which sort of look the same uh, aesthetically to me. So just put them there. As well as the bottom row is the same thing. Here's a Korean tape. Like I know it's not the same Korean or Japanese or Taiwan, but it has like this, you know, like writing that I can't read, <laughs> so to speak. So it sort of ended up here as a result. Then we get some more weird tapes at the bottom, just weird of demo tapes and various stuff like the stuff you saw over here. That's just empty shelves in the middle, which I'm thinking I might be using for like DVD player, Blu-ray player, whatever. And the other side, here's my current 8mm projector, which works so and so. Some more stuff from some similar labels. Here's all of my Ninja Mission and Mad Max uh, releases for some reason. Some classic sci-fi like, you know, Star Wars Trilogy, Terminator, Robocop, a lot of these classic sci-fi sagas. Here are all of my sort of animations as well as documentaries, I think. I know it's a mixed bag. Some more adventure, various tapes from other countries, I think these are. That I don't really, I don't really collect the label. I just have, like, you know, I, I might have some from the same label, but usually it's just like mixed, mixed films from mixed countries that aren't really, that are just stuff I have for no reason apart from the fact that it's a cool release, so to speak. Uh, oh yeah, here are the documentaries uh, section. And then at the bottom again, a lot of mixed tapes from various sources. Uh, more mixed tapes. Mixed tapes, sounds like I can say mixed tapes. Uh, here's my a bit of my drama section. Uh, as well as some Swedish films, drama comedy, Seinfeld, uh, more adventure sci-fi, like Flash Gordon, King Kong, Jurassic Park, that kind of stuff. And then just a section of really, really cool movies, <laughs> which is a weird section, but you'll know what I mean. This is like the, the cool movies and, and badasses, like Snatch or Natural Born Killers. Uh, Train Spotting, Requiem for a Dream, LA Confidential, uh, Rules of Attraction, just films that are really sort of groundbreaking and visually inspiring and awesome. Like Old Boy. Films which you, you see and then you just go like, that is the coolest film ever. Some more stuff of that nature, a lot of Tarantino, Kill Bill, Killing Zoe, David Lynch section, a bunch of David Lynch stuff here. 
some comedies, I think, which I don't have a lot of. Uh, comedy and drama, I think. <laughs> I think. I know it's comedy and drama, but whatever. Uh, some more tapes from some of the same labels. Don't have too much of. And uh, yeah, now we're coming to the final shelf here. Same label again, Juno Media, Swedish VHS label. Here's my Phantasm stuff. Yeah, my Phantasm stuff. And also, here's a uniform mug. And my, ah, uh, I even forget his name now. Uh, fuck. Richard Stanley is his name. The guy who directed Dust Devil, Hardware, incredible director, and I like to double dip on, on films like Dust Devil. This is a Korean tape. Love this for the alternate artwork. I mean, I, I love these movies like Hardware and Dust Devil. It's, it's such unique films. The reason why they they don't match is because some of these shelves have a certain height, and this one is slightly higher. So if I have a if I have a large tape, I can put it here. If I have a small tape, I can put it here. That way I can sort of keep like all of my Phantasm slash uh, Richard Stanley stuff and I'll always have a shelf where it fits, whether it's small or, or large. That's like the way I work sort of all around the room, I got some places. That's why I did the same thing for Mad Max and, and Ninja Mission over there, so yeah. <sighs> and then finally my little Frank Darabont is the director, so this is my little Frank Darabont section. And yeah, that is it for the walkthrough of the movie room in terms of looking at all the movies. And uh, oh yeah, now I just guess I just have the TV left to talk about, so. And uh, might as well pull down the curtains now. I have no idea what I'm screening. Oh, sorry about that. Let's just uh, push the uh, quick Netflix button. There we go. And like that, we're on Netflix. This is actually... I don't have the exact make of this. I think it was the Philips 7500 series. I forget the exact make and model, but maybe I'll, go, I'll just put that in the video description. It really ties the room together, doesn't it? I don't know, I just think that, you know, it became an entirely different room having the TV there, and it really works. And another thing which I did recently, which you can see up here, is that I have a second drop-down curtain, also from Ikea. And this is something which I only use... Doesn't work! So I got a pull-down curtain here, which, you know, I got a slanted ceiling, so I can't really place a wider one. I would have used a wider one if I could. But this is nice because it allows me to project 8mm films on it, which don't really need too big of a screen, because sort of it works pretty well uh, in terms of the distance. Like if you want to have the, the projector here, and it's sort of like a good enough distance. So yeah, that's how I solved that little problem. Now it is quite far out into the room. I wanted to have it further back originally, but I had to sort of go by the fact that I only have these these pillars. This roof is just an inner roof. These aren't real boards. They're just it's just a flat surface like that you put up in sections. You can see that I got like edges here. So there it's just like one big section that you put up and that's why I had to work with uh, you know, I had to place this where I know that I have my boards in the ceiling. So that's why it is as far out as it is. Like I said, you got your built-in Netflix app. You also have, I think you got YouTube somewhere over here. Yeah, here we got YouTube. So I can actually head out on YouTube to watch myself, I guess, if I want to. I don't want to show too much. I'll just show something to, to show you the and the light function. Just take down the volume a bit to avoid too much problem. But yeah, I can sort of see how the ambi light sort of shifts uh, on the curtain. 
based on like uh, the music video. So yeah, that's just the only idea, only thing I wanted to show you about that. But anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna take that away because someone's probably gonna flag it otherwise. I am super happy about the setup. TV is, is an awesome television, I love it, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else left to say, I've talked for way too long already. I guess this is the, maybe not concluding part, but the second and uh, mainly concluding part of the movie room makeover, from downstairs to upstairs, it only took me one year to upload the second part, but yeah, it has actually been quite a time consuming process, and I just got the TV a little while ago, so it's been a lot of stuff out here and it, it's been very sort of disorganized and things, so now I'm feeling that I'm finally getting some stuff together, I get my chair, I get the TV, I get like the drapes and things are just coming together, so I'm feeling like still stuff I want to do, like in this, uh, the small room, I would definitely like to paint the floor, maybe get a white floor, uh, just like I have in there, but I would love to hear what you guys think now that it's almost complete If you have any suggestions or not like I'm gonna change stuff just because you say it But it would be nice to hear uh, what you think if you think it worked out or it's something that you think doesn't work and Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much I was so close. Thank you very much for watching and as usual hope to see you all next time